Hello guys, Tonkwell here. Hope everyone's doing very well out there indeed. Today, I'm checking out the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. <laughs> So the Torpedo Captor X is the latest and greatest device from Two Notes Audio Engineering. And these guys have released a lot of very cool products over the years that have become the staple of a lot of guitar players recording and live arsenals as far as their tone goes. So this basically looks a lot like the Captor that they released a few years ago, but it's so much more. It's the same kind of form factor, but this is a reactive load box very high-end reactive load box, something that Two Notes have become very, very well known for right back from their Reload, which I have over there behind me, and also the Two Notes Torpedo Studio, which I also have back there. It's also a virtual cabinet simulator. And this is not just impulse responses, this is a ton of flexibility in terms of loads of different cabs. I think you've got 32 different cabs on there by default, shipping with the unit eight different microphone combinations per cab as well, and then virtual rooms. There's so much going on there in terms of shaping that tone. Then we've got an attenuator built in as well, so you can run your tube amps with the master volume cranked as we should do when we're running tube amps, and we can actually attenuate that down. So in the room utilizing our speakers, whether it's a one by 12, two by 12, or four by 12, we can utilize the uh, Captor X to bring the level down. And then we've got an IR loader as well, our impulse response loader. So you can use impulse responses with this as well. The unit itself is quite unique on the market because unlike all the other products that use this kind of feature set, this is really, really small. So to get this much flexibility in this form factor at this price point as well is really remarkable because unlike a lot of the products in the past that have combined this feature set that have been above a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars, this is very affordable indeed. Um, you know, it's a really, really good unit in terms of price to performance ratio. So the actual unit itself actually introduces some brand new technology as well to this style of product in the form of true stereo outputs with stereo reverbs, but also a twin tracker function, which is basically going to split the left and right signal and create a stereo expander, which is going to essentially just delay one of the signals and change the attack and give you like a twin tracked guitar sound uh, emulated within the device without you having to record two different tracks so we'll check that out as well. So the actual unit itself it's finished in this lovely white kind of metal housing it's built like an absolute tank and on the front of the unit we've got this white LED with the grill obviously it's an attenuator so it's got to disperse the heat somewhere but this also functions as an LED indicator to tell you when you're clipping so it will go red when you're clipping and on the front of the device we've got our output level We've got our voicing, and this is kind of a staple thing that a lot of the Two Notes products have, where you can shape the overall EQ response or curve of the unit. When we dial to the left, we get more mid-range, kind of like a big mid-hump, and then when we dial to the right, we scoop the mids out and have a slightly more modern sound. So think of it like vintage and modern. We've then got this space control. Now this is kind of unique to this product in that the space control can map to a few different functions depending on what we're doing. I've got the app here on my iPhone loaded up, um, and you can actually set that space control to things like stereo width of the reverb, dry wet mix of the reverb. Then we have six different presets that we can store on the front of the unit. Now this is pretty de rigueur for these kind of units. Uh, but although you've got six presets on the front, you can actually store up to 128 presets via the app, uh, either on your computer or on your iOS or Android device, depending on what you're using. And of course you can use uh, a phone like this, or you could use a tablet if you wanted a bigger sized interface, entirely up to you. And that will connect via Bluetooth, so really, really cool. We've then got an amp in level, so we can have high or low. Now around the back, this is where things start to get super cool because we have dual balanced XLR outs. Now those dual balanced XLR outs can be run one of three different ways. We can have 
a standard stereo out where we've got basically the signal left and right, and we can use that for things like stereo reverbs, for the twin tracking in stereo as well, and that's going to give us a really wide, modern, fat guitar sound without having to record multiple guitar parts. We can also run in dual mono mode. Now dual mono mode is going to allow us to do things like send one sound to the front of house, with the simulation of the mics or the IRs enabled. And then we can send another signal to our monitor on stage, let's say, with a different EQ curve. It's got its own independent EQ curve for the alternative output. Uh, or we could utilize that to send, say, a different reverb mix to the left and the right, uh, depending on what we want to do, again, front of house or on stage, or record two different signals for giving you a bigger, wider sound. The other way you could utilize the left and right outs is to use dry wet, so, or wet dry as people prefer to call it. So you could utilize the cabinet simulation and mic simulation on the left channel, for instance, and then send the right channel out completely dry for then utilizing, say, Wall of Sound 3, um, which is two notes plug-in version of their cabinet simulation. And actually the really cool thing about doing that is that that gives you access to as many cabs and mics as you want because with the two notes hardware, you're usually maxed out at two different cabs and mic combinations, which you are with the Captor X as well. Uh, no bad thing, but obviously if you want to do some really, really extensive sound experimentation, you can do that autonal shaping with Wall of Sound 3, which you get a license for completely free with the Captor X as well, which is very cool. We also have our speaker in and speaker output, and then of course we've got the attenuation switch, which goes from full down to low. So three settings of attenuation, uh, so no fine tuning, but you do have the ability to knock that all the way down to low. And the unit itself is designed to take an eight ohm input. Okay, so it will go up to 100 watts with eight ohms, and then you can run that out to uh, an eight ohm cab if you want to do that. Uh, we also have a USB input on the back as well, which will allow you to use the remote control software with your Mac or Windows based computer, either your laptop or your desktop. Um, but of course, you've also got Bluetooth access on there as well to use the app with any mobile device, which is very cool. And then the final thing, the pièce de résistance, we also have a TRS MIDI jack input on there as well, which is going to allow us, with the included TRS to MIDI cable, that two nuts have very kindly thrown in with the package, to hook this up to any compatible MIDI controller and control any of the functions, say, for instance, preset switching via MIDI, which is super cool. If you have like a Gig Rig G2, or if you've got a Boss ES8 or an ES5, or something like a Morningstar, you can actually switch your presets uh, on the Torpedo Captor X utilizing your MIDI footswitch, which is insanely cool. And that allows you to have up to 128 presets ready to go for any scenario you like, which is very cool, especially if you play in lots of different bands or you do lots of different recording scenarios, or you've got lots of different amps that require different cabinet simulations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through my setup here and then I'm gonna show you some of the presets I've created, show you the flexibility that's available here. But in terms of the way that I'm hooked up here, I've got my Ibanez TQM1 running into my pedal board down here. So the drives you're gonna hear are gonna be my OnePlus Dual Fusion, uh, and also the Carl Martin Plexitone. That's running into a Laney Lionheart 2x12 combo down here. Everything's on the clean channel, so all the drives are from the pedals. Then that's running into the Torpedo Captor X, and then that's running in stereo into my audio interface, which is running in Studio One. Now I'm actually utilizing the app here as well, so I'm gonna do everything via the app, and you can see that on screen. Um, so this is effectively the layout that you've got for the unit. And if I just play for a second here, you'll hear the most amazing stereo reverb. So all the effects that you're hearing, I'm not using any delays from the pedal board or anything, all the effects will come from the actual Captor X and it's got this gorgeous room simulation and stereo reverb built in. So the, the actual app itself is split into two sections on the iPhone or on an Android phone, but if you're using a larger screen, it'll be just a single screen and you can swipe between those two sides just like this. So if we start on this side, we've effectively got your cabinet simulation on the top here and we can switch between the different cabs very, very easily like this, or we can use this cabinet selection here, go into any of our cabs and select those as we so desire. And then we've got a pair of mics. So down here, we've actually got the ability to select between multiple different mics, mic A and mic B. And then within those two different sections there, we can actually select whether we want the front or the back of the cab, 
or, and then we can balance our volumes, double tap to set it back to zero, and then we've got the distance and the axis on the actual cab itself. So where that, cab, that uh, mic is positioned on the actual speaker itself, which is very cool. We can then mute and then we can change the phase as well. Um, and we can bypass the actual mic simulation if we want to, which is very useful in dual mono mode. So that's that functionality there. We also have the ability to switch between different rooms and we can do that on the next page here with our reverb setting. So we can select between different rooms. And if I select Studio A, for instance, and go back here, you can see that the actual graphic updates and shows us that we're in Studio A, which is very cool. I can also grab the mics and move them around like this as well, which is quite cool. Um, gives us a little bit more control visually. Some people like that. I like to work in this kind of detailed mode where I can kind of work a little bit more clearly and more easily. Um, and again, every single different cabinet will have different combinations of mics available, okay? Some of the different cabs that you can get from the store will allow you to have different mic combinations depending on what two notes have done. Now the super cool thing is every single position here is effectively like having a different impulse response. And so each of these cabs has effectively got thousands and thousands of impulse responses built in. So you can think of it like, as opposed to a standard impulse response, which is a fixed position of the mic and a fixed position of that mic on the um, actual speaker in terms of the axis and the distance, uh, it's actually a very flexible setup here. It's like a dynamic IR setup that you've got going on, which is very cool. So as I play... <laughs> I've got a huge amount of flexibility over the tone. Again, I could select here. Um, one of the other mics, like a condenser 87. <laughs> And the response is fantastic because it's a reactive load box, which is super, super cool. So this page is fairly straightforward. We also have a noise gate on here as well. And the cool thing about this noise gate, if you do happen to have noise, is it has a learn function built in as well. So it will listen to the, uh, the amount of noise that you've got and set the noise gate appropriately. And then of course you can select between a soft or a hard response to that noise gate, which is very cool indeed. There's also a tuner on here. So as I play, There we go, slightly out of tune, but never mind. And then of course we can save presets here as well. So if I tap on the save button here, we have access to our 128 different presets and that conforms to standard MIDI functionality. So that means that we've got access to our 128 MIDI slots um, if we want to use a switching system, which is very cool. Now, if I come back to my, the sound that I've got here, which is my one plagial fusion running into the laney, as I say, there's so much more that we can do. If I run over onto the right hand side here, we've got an EQ, enhancer, reverb, and then we've got the really cool stuff to do with the different ways we can run in terms of stereo or dual mono um, functionality. So the EQ is pretty self-explanatory, obviously. <laughs> We've got three different modes. We've got guitar, bass, and a custom mode as well, which is a fully parametric EQ, which is very cool indeed. Switch the EQ off. Now, one of my favorite settings is the enhancer. So the enhancer is basically, it's been a feature that's been in a lot of Two Notes devices over the years, and I've used it a lot with the Two Notes uh, Torpedo Studio. This is allowing us to add body thickness and brilliance to our setup, which is effectively low end, mids, and high end but it's kind of a sweep of EQ settings that are gonna allow us very easily to add some uh, really nice tonal shaping to our sound. So. So that's a really useful feature and I use that a great deal when I'm actually running through any of the Two Notes products. I think that's a really cool thing to have. And again, there's a bass mode as well. 
Okay, so specific for you bass players because there's bass cabs built in as well. Uh, then we get into our reverbs and this is super, super cool. So if I grab one of these hall reverbs, let's say, and we increase the mix. Got this lovely stereo reverb. <laughs> Let's switch over to the plexi tone here. Absolutely fantastic. Let me just turn off the delay as well. We don't want that on there. Um, so this allows you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you set this up. So you can go from a room simulation like that all the way to insano levels of, of uh, kind of, you know, massive room reverbs if you want. So now... If we change the color, we can darken things up. Now, of course, these are stereo reverbs as well because we're running in the stereo mode. I can switch that out like this by tapping this button. And in the stereo mode, we can change the width of our reverb. And actually, in this case, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. So this button down here that says dry, wet, and stereo expander is going to change the functionality of the space control just here. So. When we're in the stereo expander mode, it's going to change the width of the reverb. If I pull the space down, hopefully you can see that the width decreased as well. That's where this space control comes in very useful on the front of the unit because I can now, if you look at the app at the same time, you can see that width is increasing and decreasing. So we have the ability to do that from the front of the hardware as well, which is super cool. If I go into dry wet mode now, this is gonna control the dry and wet mode of the reverb. So we pull it back out. <laughs> Then we go back in, increase the space, we get huge reverb. Super, super cool. So we also have the ability here to select from all of our different rooms, as we mentioned before, and you can really, really start to tailor this to be whatever you need it to be, which is very cool. Now, down on the bottom here, we have possibly the most exciting feature um, other than the fantastic kind of um, room simulations and cabinet simulations, which is the twin tracker. So when running in stereo mode, we've got this twin tracker button. Let's pull the reverb back out. <laughs> So at the moment, we're running two mics and two cabs, and we're just running those to the left and right outs, and the stereo effect is coming from the reverb. But if we hit the twin track, fun to play with. That is one of those features that when you switch it off, all the fun goes away. It's just crazy. And we've got a control for tightness, so how separated those two signals are. Of course, what's happening there is the dry signal is on the left, 
and the kind of twin tracked signal or the delayed signal is on the right. <laughs> Now we can change the balance here. To be whatever we want to in terms of positioning where that kind of balance of the stereo tracking is or the, the twin tracker is, which is again very cool. Very simple, that can be saved as a preset as well, but that's just in the stereo mode. So if we go to module mono mode now, again, we've got the option here of running either dry, wet or wet, dry, and also running with a different settings for the monitor EQ and also for the left and right side of the reverb. So we can do that by, if we want to run wet, dry, for instance, we can bypass the signal on the right output. <laughs> And now, of course, you're hearing that horrible sound of a, uh, an amplifier without a speaker cabinet running through full range. But that means that we can record that separately and then run that through another plugin, say Wall of Sound 3, which is very cool. And then we do have a separate monitor EQ for the right output as well. And again, it's like a version of the post effects EQ as well. So we can turn that on. And now our right output. <laughs> Clip the front end of the interface. But that's very useful indeed. And also we can change the wet and dry of the reverb for the left and the right outputs independently. So when we have DW there, we're just controlling the wetness of the left and right as a whole in terms of the reverb, of course. And then when we're on DW left, Let's just go into DWR and actually take out all the reverb on the right side. Now, we can control the amount of signal. And now only the left side is actually getting any reverb at all. And if we go to the right side, the actual signal here has got no reverb. And that means that we could run reverb to front of house or we could run reverb to our monitors and not front of house or for recording vice versa, which is cool. Very, very nice indeed. So there is an insane amount of functionality here. Now, of course, we also have the impulse responser, uh, responser, impulse response loading mode as well. And there's some impulse responses built in that you can utilize. <laughs> So that's cool as well if you're really into some specific impulse responses from different companies. Um, and then obviously you can load your presets and so on and so forth, load different cabs via the app. Very intuitive and straightforward to use. And uh, you know, it's a fantastic device. So there's nothing quite like this on the market. I think that this is the best value product in this range that you can get. So, you know, in terms of its functionality, in terms of the sound quality, and in terms of uh, the flexibility tonally that you can get, and the build quality, and the fact that this will go in a gig bag as well is really, really insane. There's pretty much nothing to compete with this in terms of price and in terms of features on the market right now. There's plenty of devices that do a similar job, but none of them can compete on those two factors, as I mentioned, price to performance. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this demo. If you did, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons below. You can also check out my lessons online. You'll also find below a link to two notes so you can check out the Torpedo Captor X and uh, you know, get one of these for yourself. I really can't recommend it highly enough. It's a fantastic device. Congratulations, Two Notes, you've done it again. Hit the ball out the park, and uh, I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.